Good morning you guys and welcome back. So it is current day. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few updates in the fish room. We'll be back in just a moment. So we have the Corydora species, Black Venezuela. These are a uh, um, a chocolate strain of the Corydora species. I uh, want to say there's a group of five in here. Uh, so they're getting to that age and size to uh, begin breeding. I uh, got these guys when they were uh, small, uh, but uh, they are growing out quite well. Uh, this is just a customized tank actually using the old 20 tall that I've talked about before in previous videos. Lots of algae and plants and so forth in the tank, which is what I want to see. Uh, this over here is a 10 gallon tank. Uh, this is just containing uh, more or less acting as a rearing grow out tank as well as a quarantine. Uh, currently just have some ram's horn snails in there and not too much there. Down here is a 40 breeder. Uh, we have some long fin variant of your albino ancestors plecos. Uh, you can see one there. Uh, those guys are juvenile in size and once they grow out and get to appropriate age I'll go ahead and uh, begin breeding those guys as well as we have different variants of your ivory to gold and chocolate uh, mystery snails here as you can see. Uh, we have one of the Nigerian red curvinsis back there. Let's go ahead and see if we can focus in So we got a pair in here, um, there's the other one over here, so those guys might actually be, can't see fry currently. Uh, these guys are wonderful um, as far as parent raising, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, go ahead and take a look in the description once this is done and uh, I'll give you the specific water parameters. Um, and recommendations that go about breeding these guys. If you guys are interested, uh, go feel free to go ahead and take a look at that. So this is currently running um, on a continuous drip, changing a little over 100% water on a daily basis while maintaining appropriate beneficial bacteria and nitrogen within this specific setup. Um, we do have some other ancestrous um, breeding groups in here. Uh, there you can see the female back there. She just went behind the cave. And then these are customized caves, as I've shown uh, live builds on, and I've talked about these are actually on the website as well. Uh, this is given an opportunity to actually do uh, parabonding, um, and uh, you can utilize these in conjunction with utilizing like a reverse trio. So uh, basically, you're going to have um, look at that nice male right there. Beautiful male. So you want to give these guys lots of options. Um, let them kind of choose uh, what they want. It's always best. But yeah, going back to the reverse trio. So instead of having a standard trio, which would be like a male of two females, you're actually going to have two males to a female. Uh, hence the name reverse trio. So what that means is when you talk about um, ancestors placos and parabonding, oftentimes what they do is with most uh, placo species, they're gonna take the female, course her back in here. Uh, this is why they're designed this way. They'll get them back in, female will go ahead and release the eggs. Uh, male will go ahead and fertilize those eggs and then um, remove the female from the cave at which point he'll begin um, parent raising those eggs while maintaining uh, aeration by fanning the eggs consistently so they don't fungus over. Um, but what happens in that time frame is keep in mind, depending on your water parameters and temperature and so forth, it could take a week and a half, two weeks before those um, eggs begin to um, start to hatch out. 
and in that meantime those males will not eat whatsoever so that's why uh, as far as pair bonding goes having two males in there they'll actually um, hence the name pair bond they're actually um, parenting uh, they're, they're exchanging parenting roles so oftentimes the males will switch and I've even seen it before where the female will come around to the other side go ahead and deposit eggs um, and then uh, they'll actually take turns so that's why you see this divider here along with the removable lid so what I do at that point in time depending on the setup um, is I'll go ahead and remove um, the male once I know that they've been fertilized <clears throat> I'll go ahead and do the work I'll go ahead and remove these guys and I'll see if I can link a video somewhere here in the end card or down in the description so you guys can go ahead and take a look uh, specifically what I mean um, in a little bit more detail if you want to take a look at that but that's something that we talked about several times on this channel uh, it's something I've been doing for many many years as far as uh, breeding and raising of ancestral species of placos so yeah you can definitely go feel free to go ahead and take a look at that um, they are quite easy to raise I'll go ahead and put in the specifics uh, once it's done feel free to go ahead and look in the description and um, you can identify with how uh, I go about conditioning these guys um, to to breed so let's go ahead and take a look over here so this tank is um, your uh, Neocaridinia heteropoda, your carbon really strains of shrimp. Uh, these guys are definitely prolific breeders. Again, this is on a uh, continuous drip, which is ran through a carbon block filter, um, changing roughly 75%, 70% uh, water daily in this specific setup. Um, and they just breed like crazy. So these guys do very, very well. We do have these on the website. Uh, as long as the as well as the ancestral uh, species of placos, I know when you guys are currently watching this, being current day, uh, we're not going to have the albino variant of your ancestors placos currently available. But you can always check back at a later point in time, uh, depending, on, of course, when you're watching this video. So these are absolutely beautiful, um, becoming one of my favorite, uh, just due to the colorations. Uh, it's not doing it justice here on camera. Uh, but you can see that chocolate to um, that snowball almost in a sense where you're getting uh, like a like a cross um, is the way I would look at it. So you're going to have uh, that carapace which is going to be uh, almost like a transparent in some of these. Um, and then you're also going to have that, uh, that blackish bluish looking coloration as well. Um, but you can go ahead and mix these with other Neocaridinia species, but do keep in mind that they can um, crossbreed, so your genetic lines um, are going to be crossed in that way. So if you want to keep them true, just keep it true. Um, maintain your lines by keeping um, these guys together in a group, and then you can go ahead and selectively line breed, uh, which we'll talk about that in a later, later time in video. But I'll go ahead and link uh, down in the description the specific water parameters that I recommend if you want to get these guys to breed and maintain these guys successfully. So this is another Heteropoda tank here. Got some Naha grass, um, just run sponge filters. Uh, same, same situation as this tank. I am running uh, about 70% water changes daily in this tank on a continuous drip system. Same thing with this tank and this tank. So. Yeah, if you guys are interested in any, any of the Neocaridinia heteropoda species, uh, you can see a beautiful female here. Uh, so when you guys order from us, the size that you're going to be obtaining is going to be anywhere from, <coughs> excuse me, a quarter inch to um, a half inch in size, which is what I recommend. So they're going to be right around this size here and they do not take long to grow out and keep in mind that they're only going to live about a year and a half to two years depending on your water conditions and water parameters which is pretty good for uh, these specific species of shrimp i have had them live up to three to four years um, but you know with with how prolific these guys breed um, you're always going to have um, you know continuous shrimp on hand as long as you provide the appropriate water parameters and of course your tank doesn't crash 
or anything like that. But you want to provide driftwood, uh, some form of like katapa leaves. Um, you can use like oak leaves, uh, mulberry leaves, something like that. I personally recommend, uh, which we also carry on our website. We don't carry any driftwood currently, but we do carry the... Um, uh, these are from Thailand. Really, really nice um, katapa leaves that uh, I've gotten through a supplier for quite some years now. So, last tank of these. Uh, well, I shouldn't say last tank. We have several more, but uh, within this fish room anyway. Um, and then some of these guys are actually uh, transitioned to full chocolate, which is pretty cool. So, um, we got a... Uh, Juvenile and Sisters Placo in this tank, which I gotta get out at some point. But um, so these guys do well, uh, as you can see. I have mystery snails in there. Um, I would not necessarily recommend if you want to maintain um, good lines and without causing any depletion in your colonies. I would recommend just keeping these guys in a species-only tank, uh, along with some mystery snails, is fine. You might see some aggression levels. Um, as long as they're being fed appropriately and so forth, which I'll put all of that in the description as far as what I personally feed and what I recommend and how often and so forth, so you can check down there. Um, but yeah, so they will uh, potentially go after sometimes the snails and uh, shrimp can be very cannibalistic, so during molting and so forth, that's where you want to provide plenty of coverage. And before we end this video, I'll go ahead and show you an ideal setup. Of what it should look like in my recommendations this is different because I'm constantly removing and dealing with certain lineage and so forth so that's why this is more or less an open concept besides some Naha grass and so forth so I want to be able to easily catch um, and maintain these lines so that's why you see uh, not a lot of coverage so I'm constantly monitoring but for the average aquarist, somebody that wants to just utilize these as more or less a, as a display, I do recommend starting out with a group of at least 10. And I will go ahead and add a promo link, um, which will go from today, the 28th of September, um, until next month. Um, I'll run it for one month, so anybody watching this video, feel free to go ahead and take a look down in the description. If you put in the promo code um, SHRIMP10, in the website i will offer 10 percent off on these guys um, make sure that you guys check out the shipping policies and so forth based on um, our policies and procedures that are in place as far as shipping where we ship to so all the information is on the website which is also going to be linked down in the description below so feel free to go ahead and check it out um, these guys are already at a reasonable rate but having that 10 percent off on top of that if i can get you guys inspired to get into the hobby uh, these are definitely some wonderful wonderful lines um, and like I said, these are uh, very much prolific breeders, and I know that you guys will definitely be excited um, as I am with these uh, specific shrimp. Up here is a 20 long. This is a community setup. Used to have some guppies in here, which have been removed. Got a bunch of Naha Java moss and Naha grass Java moss in this tank. Uh, this is containing uh, more mystery snails and sisters, uh, placos, and some shrimp in this tank. Got some cherry shrimp up there. Um, not gonna be able to see too much in this tank due to the uh, the the coverage of all of the Naha grass. Over here we have the snowball variants of shrimp. This is another beautiful, beautiful. Um, these guys are also prolific breeders. Um, again, same water conditions of that of which uh, we just talked about with the Hetrapoda species. Um, but uh, you can go ahead and take a look in the description, and uh, you know I'll add uh, add these guys down there as well. So. I'm not going to be able to offer a uh, discount code on these guys, but uh, yeah, if you want the carbon release, um, like I said, these are, uh, I'll add a 10% uh, promo link down there, so make sure you utilize that um, at checkout. So kind of an incentive for those that follow the channel. Um, this over here is going to be a 10-gallon uh, rack system. So starting with the top tank here on the left, this is a quarantine rear and grout tank. Just have some different ancestral uh, placos in here. Got a long fin chocolate brown bushy nose placo right on top of that PVC. Um, and then we have some driftwood and so forth as well in this tank. 
Over here is going to be your uh, Maculatus Gold Leopard Platy. Uh, these guys are absolutely a beautiful uh, strain of your platies. Uh, these guys do very well when it comes to breeding. Um, you can go ahead and take a look in the description below as far as my recommendations and so forth if you want to go ahead and breed these guys. Um, but uh, yeah, so very beautiful. These are your Gold Leopard Platy variant and these are also on the website. You got more over here. All right, moving down to the killifish tank. So we have our uh, blue Galeris here in this tank. Um, these guys are absolutely beautiful. Of course, we have the male going there broadside and then the female. Um, I got to check yet this morning to see if there's any eggs deposited within that spawning mop. Uh, we'll do a more in-depth elaborative video here in the near future. I will uh, displaying how I go about and illustrating to breed and rear of these uh, specific species. But these are definitely a beautiful specimen to say the least. Um, and then hopefully sometime in the future I'll go ahead and be offering these guys on the website. Uh, but at this point in time, uh, they're finally getting to that age to go ahead and start breeding. Um, the next tank over here, uh, not much action going on. I'm gonna be getting ready to uh, introduce um, some more uh, livestock in this tank. So gonna be utilizing this as a grow out tank here in the next week or so. I uh, currently just have some Neocaridinia snowball shrimp um, in there right now, which will be fine uh, with that of which I'll be adding to. Uh, so you guys just have to stay tuned to the channel to learn more about what I'm going to be adding. If you guys have been following along over on the Facebook, and if you haven't, definitely check it out. Um, it's a Sergeant Tank, look us up. And uh, yeah, so we have the uh, orange liar tail killifish here in this tank. Uh, most likely, the male and female are going to be back there. Uh, these guys are prolific breeders, um, given the right conditions and so forth. So I can also add that information in the description below. And I will be doing a more in-depth video on breeding of these guys. These guys will be available hopefully in the next two weeks on the website. Uh, so feel free to go ahead and check it out. Um, you know depending on when you're watching this video. Again, today is September the 28th of 2017. So the female is actually up there. And most likely that male is down here in that spawning mop. So usually if I come about every 24 to 48 hours, I'll be pulling between three and four eggs um, in that time frame. And as these guys age and develop growth, uh, you're just going to see more and more uh, production, but I'm not going to go into the details in this video about breeding. Like I said, future video, I'll go ahead. I've talked about it on live streams. I've talked about it a little bit in previous videos. Uh, however, I will do a more in-depth video, so you're just going to have to stay tuned. Lots of information out there on the internet, but as far as species identification and so forth, I'll go ahead and add that in the description so you can take a look. Down here we have more of the uh, Neocaridinia heteropoda species. Um, these are the your carbon rillies again, so just another additional tank. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to be able to see too much. Um, these guys are pretty small yet in this tank. You can see one up here on this driftwood right there. So I got to add some additional lighting to that tank. Um, these are your panda guppies. Uh, these guys are not available yet on the website because I am still working with their lineage to maintain true and consistent um, lineage. But uh, I am liking the colorations thus far. You can see that nice female right here in the front. Um, by far one of my favorite guppies. But yeah, these guys are um, doing very well as far as breeding. Um, so again, guppies really isn't much else to say about it. So um, yeah. Like I said, these guys aren't going to be available. I don't know when they're going to be avail available, but as long as I can show that they're consistent maintaining their lines, I'll go ahead and offer these guys sometime in the future on the website. We have more um, guppy fry over here, a mix between just your uh, fancies, and we got some pandas in that tank 
Um, so not much to see there. These are your uh, Rizius Ware, uh, which is a Daisy's Rice Fish variant. Uh, again, I've done a little bit of information and video on these guys, but not a great deal. I will do a more in-depth uh, species focus on these guys as far as breeding, how I at least breed and so forth. Um, but yeah, these guys are pretty unique and uh, they will get some pretty cool coloration so you can go ahead and check it out uh, down in the description as far as the specific species if you want to take a look um, at a little bit uh, better imaging to see exactly what they're going to look like at adult age. Um, but yeah, these guys are pr pretty dang cool if I don't say so myself. We got some more panda guppies along with a mix of your snowball uh, shrimp down here. Uh, not going to be able to see too much due to the algae buildup and so forth, um, but that is all beneficial microorganisms that I maintain on the glass. That's why I don't do a lot of um, uh, tank by tank. Uh, you guys have been asking, so we're going to have to make it work. Because uh, every time I remove um, just to show video, that's taking away from the beneficial microorganisms I want to see on the tanks. Um, not only to balance out the appropriate mineral distribution and nutrient load that I want to see in calcification and so forth in the tank. Um, this is just something I've been doing well over a decade and it has worked for me very successfully through the years so that's why I maintain um, lots of algae buildup and so forth. I'm um, just kind of an old schooler uh, when it comes to that and uh, yeah. so. Down here we have some, we have a couple of fry left along with some cherry shrimp. These are your Neocodinia species, um, or I'm sorry, these are your Nigerian red crabenzis and your Neocodinia cherry shrimp down here. A uh, little bit better grading of shrimp in this tank so you can see that they can coexist uh, at this point, but these guys are just currently in grow out. Got a nice female right uh, down here. You can see, um, but the coloration is going to change, a lot of algae, um, so that's why you're seeing back there by the carapace, uh, just below the saddled area, um, you're going to see some of that greenage. Uh, that is not uncommon, it's actually quite normal because they do adapt and, um, as a defense mechanism to their surroundings. Uh, you can see another female down here, if we can focus, it's actually buried up uh, in the holding. So yeah, you can see that the uh, Nigerian uh, Kerbenzis here, there's one of them, as we can see somewhat in the front, uh, isn't even paying attention to the shrimp, uh, not to say that they wouldn't go after some of the smaller. Uh, these guys won't stay in here for any uh, period of time, long period of time. I will go ahead and remove these guys uh, at some point here in the near future. And then the last tank here in this fish room that we're going to show and wrap this up. This is uh, a uh, breeding setup. It's well established setup on a continuous trip, changing about 70 75 percent water daily in this tank. And this is housing um, your chocolate neocarid, I'm sorry, your chocolate and sisters placos along with um, your uh, mystery snails. So I've done full in depth videos. You can go ahead and look in my repertoire. If I can find, I'll go ahead and link it either in an end card or down in the description so you can go ahead and check it out uh, but here's one of the mystery snails here um, these guys get very very large you can see one of them back there it's got some detritus on the shell that's what that is so lots of mom lots of detritus um, which is what I love to see especially on a continuous drip you got some pathos uh, these are all your Mr. Snail eggs up here so you don't have to initially incubate. The incubation process is actually taking place up here on this log anyway, providing the appropriate uh, moisture distribution in this fish room. Um, these guys are definitely, I got them in the thousands. Um, so again, we've got lots of mystery snails available. Uh, you can definitely check it out there on the website. I'll also offer 10% off from today September 28th of 2017, running 30 days out. If you put in um, snail 10, you will get 10% off uh, for the next 30 days. So 
so definitely check it out and uh, just kind of an incentive there for you since you guys are following the wrong, along and if you are interested so um, the Hetropoda species again shrimp 10 in the description down below go ahead and add that in check out at our website if you guys are interested in this it will be 10% off your order and with your mystery snails put snail 10 and you'll get 10% off your order of the mystery snails for the next 30 days all right you guys I appreciate you very much for uh, hanging in there hopefully you guys have if you stay up at this point give yourself two thumbs up that's awesome make sure you enter those promo codes um, that's what they're there for uh, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe I want to make sure you guys continue to come back I want to provide more education to you guys and inspiration to get you into this amazing hobby as it does a great deal for me as far as uh, dealing with PTSD chronic pain depression and so forth so that's why I do this I do this for you guys I don't do it for me and um, not that it doesn't help me don't get me wrong but uh, I want to make sure you guys stay inspired get into this amazing hobby I want to bring you guys more um, more insight more information so definitely stay tuned tune in here on Saturday 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a live stream and then Sunday we'll see you right back here another video 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and you'll just have to wait and see not sure what it's gonna be yet but with that being said you guys smash that like button go ahead take a look at those description promo code down below and as always stay encouraged keep on keeping on happy fishing We'll see you guys right back here on the next one.